is Berlin Filippo. I am from the Marshall Islands and I am currently an intern at the Transition, Transitioning to Low Frequency Transfer Project. So the two of us will um, moderate through our event today. We will also provide different, different information about the organizations, but the main center point of our um, presentation is speaking about WAM, Canoes of the Marshall Islands, which is a national NGO here in the Marshall Islands. Um, they have a background in canoe building, and we will hear more from Berlin just uh, in a minute. Um, we are based here in the Marshall Islands on the uh, Majuru Atoll, and the Marshall Islands are um, uh, an atoll nation. And um, we are here to support the Marshall Islands to fulfill its national determined contributions under the UNFCCC commitments uh, under the Paris Agreement, especially in the transport sector. RMI set itself very ambitious goals. And these goals say that from domestic shipping by 2030, the emissions will be reduced by 40% and to achieve full decarbonization in 2050. This is extraordinary. Marshall Islands is the only country worldwide that has set itself these goals and uh, explicitly trying to reduce emissions from domestic shipping. So thereby it, say, it sets a great example, uh, not only here in the region, but also internationally. It shows how countries that from their land mass are not um, as big also uh, in terms of their population. But anyways, there can be a lot of achievement being done, um, especially towards a climate friendly and an energy efficient future. A brief history of one Ailing in Majal, acronym WAM. It is a Marshallese NGO that is committed to empowering the Marshallese community. Men, women, young adults, and kids by giving all the opportunity to learn the skills to move forward into a sustainable livelihood and future for the Marshall Islands. An example of this is WAM sending in talented boat builders from their atolls to Majuro Atoll to learn how to build Wam Catamaran and Proa, which will be discussed more later. Wam's core values are to work with youths, dropouts, local and international communities to preserve and protect Marshallese culture, its environment and traditions through a long-standing contemporary boat building, sailing and navigation, woodworking, weaving, and developing life skills and work ethics for all participants. WAM also focuses on sustainable economic and cultural development, national cohesiveness, and strengthening self-identity to the Marshallese society. In the Marshall Islands, maritime transport is essential for economic activity, for connectivity, and for resilience. But it is also a significant factor for delivering education, health, environmental and economic development, including response to climate change impacts. Connectivity between the atolls and islands of the Marshall Islands by sea is essential to provide basic access to services and socioeconomic opportunities. Especially for communities on the outer island and atolls, although the cost to provide transport services to these destinations is very high. 
The Marshall Islands is almost entirely dependent on imported fossil fuels, which places a heavy burden on national and household budgets. Shifting from the use of fossil fuel propulsion to renewable energy sources could help in reducing the costs of providing regular and reliable transport services, especially to the outer islands and the atoll communities. And thereby, we support the more inclusive and sustainable economic growth for the country. Given the dependence on imported fossil fuels to power domestic shipping and the vulnerability of the Marshall Islands to fuel price shocks, identifying and trialing options for reducing fossil fuel use in the domestic fleet is a priority that will have multiple benefits for the Marshall Islands if successfully implemented and also shows a great example worldwide. The ambitious goals of the Marshall Islands in the sea transport have, been, have become the main driver and motivation for us to pursue and also to transition towards a low carbon fleet for the Marshall Islands for transport inside the lagoons and between atolls. On this picture, you see a very traditional canoe. It's an outrigger. Um, the design is made by um, traditionally by the canoe builders here in the Marshall Islands. And it has very different features to sailing boats that we know from other places around the world. These designs, they are very tailor-made to uh, fit to the purposes here in the Marshall Islands, into the waters, the rough ocean, and also the lagoons. These canoes, the outriggers, they are mainly used for sea transportation inside the lagoons. So that means when um, the atolls, uh, uh, they have the, the lagoon that is enclosed or has basically just some um, channels um, and is surrounded by landmass. And that allows for a better protection, but still, since the atoll, the atoll nation is very low, um, most of the islands are on average two meters above sea level. These conditions provide a good opportunity to have sailing experience and transport in the lagoons with wind conditions that allow for a safe journey. The operation of the national fleet itself, of course, needs to be performed by Marshallese sailors. And these are not only inside the lagoon, but also Since January 20 it is a significant factor for delivering education, health, environmental and economic development, including response to climate change impacts.
Still, RMI is almost entirely dependent on imported fossil fuels, which places a heavy burden on national and household budgets. Shifting from the use of fossil fuel propulsion to renewable energy sources helps in reducing the cost of providing regular and reliable transfer services to outer island communities, thereby supporting more inclusive and sustainable economic growth for the country. With the German funded project between the Ministry of Trans implementing a project on transitioning to low carbon sea transport funded by the German Ministry of Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety. The implementing partner The RMI is getting net gas carbon dioxide by the year 2025, and of 27% by the year 2030 is aimed. Particularly in the sea transport area, it has been agreed on a 40% reduction by 2030 and full decarbonization by the year 2050, as set out in the UNFCCC and DC commitments. The German-funded project Low Carbon Sea Transport aims at reducing CO2 emissions of domestic sea transport in the Marshall Islands to help achieving RMI's NDC objectives. For now, SV Quai will make a round trip to all parts of the Marshall Islands. Thousands of tons of materials will be sailed nearly emission-free by crew from the Marshall Island Shipping Cooperation. The impact on shipping already became apparent, as one of the busiest vessels hauling Copra to Mejuro and taking passengers and cargo to the outer islands, she has proven the advantages of wind-propelled ships. And the loan that was used to finance the purchase was already paid off. Now SV Quiet is making profits for the Marshall Islands Shipping Corporation. Respectable sea, SV Quiet jointly with the German-funded and more modern sailing cargo freighter will furthermore provide a much-needed platform for particular maritime training. The new built sailing ship includes special areas designated for teaching and training. SV Quiet for now already allows Marshallese seamen to learn the basics of sailing a 120 feet ship by the means of wind energy. The initiative is provided a great example that low carbon sea transportation is feasible and beneficial which is much needed to mitigate climate change. As part of the ambitious project, a sailing cargo vessel for inter sea transport in RMI has to be designed, built, tested, and assessed in the domestic waters of Marshall Islands. At a later stage of the project, a mature concept for low carbon shipping technologies will be disseminated through the region.
So as we just saw in the video, this gives a very good overview of the work that we do here. Uh, Rima Joel, the people of the Marshall Islands, were known for their superior boat building and sailing skills for century. This is a picture from 1880, where a big canoe is being shown and the people of the Marshall Islands traveled frequently between the atolls, especially for trade and for war, on big offshore canoes called Wallop. And these canoes, also as shown here on this picture, could be uh, up to 100 feet long. So this allowed for, for stable sailing opportunities. However, the lagoons of the low-lying coral atolls were increased by sails. You could see them everywhere, of smaller outrigger canoes, especially for rapid inside lagoon transportation, for food gathering, and for fishing. Nowadays, the traditional outrigger canoe design, they are not so in use in a daily on a daily basis, especially for the inter atoll voyages. In the Marshall Islands. And the traditional interatal place any longer because most of the ships, especially the wallops, they do not exist anymore. And the, none of the traditional interatal canoes survived. Nowadays, offshore transport tasks are mainly carried out by the government owned Marshall Island Shipping Corporation and private contractors with conventional monohull freighters with motorized engine causing emissions and impact on climate change. The way of inside lagoon traffic and artisanal fishing today differs from atoll to atoll. And major influence factors are the shape of the atolls. In the beginning of the presentation, we briefly saw that the atolls, they can, they come in very, very different sites. They are located scattered out and are exposed to different wind conditions. And the density and concentration of its population is also important, as well as the existence of canoe building skills. Most of the island communities were not able to maintain the canoe building skills in the past and depend now on motorized fuel and the cons consuming and the fuel that is consumed by boats for fishing and transport, they cost of course, um, a lot of money. And this fuel needs to be uh, bought by the islands, by the communities, which, which places a heavy burden on, the, on, the, on their budgets. Aside of the significant greenhouse gas emissions by the lagoon shipping sector, and this is especially the small motorized vehicles, the small vessels, the use of combustion powered boats causes various additional problems on the outer islands, including reduced availability of transportation, because some people don't have access to the boats, as well as fishing means due to expensive fuel. Sometimes the fuel is not available at all, because the field trips, the field trips, this is what the, the Marshall, what is what is being called on the Marshall Islands, the trips of the the bigger ships from the Marshall Islands shipping corporations when they come out to the outer islands from the main atoll Manchuru. And there's a long period between the field trips, sometimes up to three months, to deliver cargo, to deliver passenger, but also to deliver the needed fossil fuel to create, um, yeah, basically to, to, to be used in the outer islands. And thereby, the reduced availability to access local seafood and the obstruction of local economy. And it also compromised the security of food supply and the likely livelihoods of the people. Before we play the next video, I'll be giving a brief history of Alsen Kellen, which is shown on the bottom left of the screen. Austin Killen is a certified counselor and has been involved in the traditional canoeing culture of the Marshall Islands for several decades. He assisted the One Island Game, 
which is translated to Canoes of These Islands, project to document the step-by-step -step construction of Marshallese canoes. In the late 1990s, he co-founded the Wan Island in Mazo, WAM program, a reg registered NGO. Mr. Kellen is still the ongoing director of WAM and has also worn many hats over the years, including being the mayor and councilman for Bikini Atoll, chairman of Marshall Island Shipping Corporation, president of the Council of NGOs since 2005 until now, and a member of the National Nuclear Commission. Austin's many achievements relating to canoes includes writing of the traditional canoe and canoe model building work workbook, as well as the canoe and canoe model building manual, both translated in, into Marshallese and English. The video that we will be showcasing will be presenting Marshall Island's way forward in achieving climate resilience by transitioning to sustainable sea transport in Marshallese waters. Yeah, okay. My name is Alison Keller, and I am from the Marshall Islands. I'm the director of the One Island in Module program, or the Canoes of the Marshall Islands, a program for the at-risk youth in the Marshalls. Marshall Island is a very small country uh, located between the Hawaii and uh, Australia in the middle of the Pacific Island. It's about 2,400 miles from Hawaii, southwest of Hawaii. Um, we have very few resources that we, the country we survive on, and it mainly is fishing and copra oil uh, uh, production. The island is only one or two meters above uh, sea level. So any changes in sea water or sea level, you know, it just it's just not good for the island, you know. Um, our life and our food trees also depend on a very thin uh, water lens. And, and, and uh, whenever the salt water come in, it's destroy a lot of our uh, food trees. For the last 2,000 years, we depend on the water. We depend on voyaging because the islands are so you know, far apart. Whenever we need uh, to travel, we always depend on the uh, on our voyaging skills. And we are known around the world as one of the best canoe builders and voyages, you know, uh, in the Pacific, if not the world. So uh, voyaging is very important, which means that our, you know, our canoes, our trees, all depend on that. Because when we, uh, when we plant trees, we also plant timber. That means that we're planting the timber for our future canoes. So the process is a long process where um, if I want my grandson to have a canoe, I start the project today by planting uh, the breadfruit tree. And between now and then, we survive on these trees. But when we get to that point, then the tree is used for our kids, our grandkids to build their canoes, which they can voyage between the islands to, uh, for trading or bringing food or taking food to their, our families on the other side. And oh, again, we can go fish and use our very limited resources. So why are traditional canoes so important? How can an artifact from the past contribute to climate resilience in the future? Our life mainly depends on our vessel. This is the backbone of our life. So um, anything that we do on these very limited islands are depend on the canoes. Our country is 99% water and it's a huge country. 
which means our traditional canoes are very needed. So in order to be able to um, use these canoes, we have to share the knowledge of our traditional canoe skills with our uh, younger generation. But at the same time, I think this is something that is very important today. It's not something of the past, because when you look at the design of our canoes, um, the asymmetrical shape of the canoe prevents the canoe from lateral lift, which means there's no tagger board. The design of a symmetrical shape is the same design that is used on the airplane wing, which create lift for the airplane. Uh, so without that design, the airplane won't be flying. So it's not something of the past. It's something of the present and the future. Um, and it's it's not we're not using fossil fuel for it. So it's a win-win situation for these little countries because. We're using our traditional knowledge, our traditional skills, something that we've been using for the many thousands of years. And then it's today we're using it to replant trees for the future. And then we're making sure that the fossil fuel stay in the, in the soil, where it is today, it needs to be. What is WAM and which role does WAM play in RMI's race to climate resilience? I think WAM, or the Canoes of the Marshall Islands, one Island in Mahill, is one of the best efforts toward this resilience uh, uh, toward climate change. We're using our uh, traditional knowledge to educate our young people. So we bring all these kids, as with youth, to the program, educate them with the skills that we've been practicing for thousands of years. So we're promoting. At the same time, we're giving them another door of opportunity. So from being dropped out of schools or, you know, hanging out in the street, we bring them and show them and teach them this traditional knowledge that bring self-esteem, cultural pride, and at the same time, it'll open doors of opportunities for the for the future. Uh, so we bring in, you know, we teach them the uh, replantation, we teach them canoe buildings, and by doing this, they also automatically know language, math, science, and everything that is equivalent to what we have in classroom today. on
and minds working together.
see. Hello, everyone. So we just got the information on our screen that we have been removed from the um, from the meeting uh, while we were showing the video. So maybe if one of you could give us a quick feedback on how much you actually saw from the video, because we don't know exactly when it cut off, that would be very appreciated. Maybe the IT support can be helpful. I remember that I believe it was Mark who is the IT support in this. Or Marissa, would you be able to give us a quick feedback? Um, OK, so only, only three minutes ago. Good. So. Um, I'm a bit unsure at the moment about the video. Uh, we get the feedback that it wasn't clear at all. Would you would you consider it would be worth it to show it again, or should we continue with our presentation? Hi, 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 Janina. So, um, yeah, your video kept breaking up in places. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we we couldn't get to watch the entire video properly, but uh, it depends on you. Do you still have time uh, to show it again, or would you rather move on and just send us the link? Because the video will be will be uploaded and the link will be sent around. Okay. Well, we can try to at least show the past five minutes of the video, as there were some messages that would be important for the. Um, for, for the continuation of the of the presentation, so maybe we can try that. And if it keeps breaking up, please feel free to give us a, um, a feedback in the uh, in the in the uh, text box, so that we can interfere and 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 basically continue. And maybe I can just present what um, what Elson has shown. But of course, we will also be able to uh, show the video after or, or to share the video afterwards. Great, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. My name is Allison Keller, and I am from the our way of life today. Now, none of these skills would help other institutes that need these for their research purposes. Not only that, but because we are um, ocean people, we look at other formats, other designs, and we design our designs that fits into the, our today's life. We have Catamaran that we already built, we have pro that we already built, and we design those designs that is really fit into our communities, our way of life today. Not saying that we're going to forget our traditional things, because that it is actually part of it. So that really helps um, the communities and the outliers, and not only that, but they help our government to save money on fuel usage. Our countries use more than 60% of our annual budget for, uh, for our fossil fuel usage. Ever since the inception of the canoe program or the one element module program, we've been uh, gradually, you know, expanding and expanding to the point where we are involved with more than just the Marshall Islands. First of all, uh, the one program is an NGO, non-government organization or non-profit organization. So we automatically are working with many NGOs within the country to share what we have already uh, been accomplished with different NGOs so they can take it from there and uh, evolve it into different things. 
or whatever the focus they have, they can use our, um, you know, the, the knowledge that we have gained to add on to what they have. The local government now, they're actually also involved in it by using the skills that we have gained. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, right now, we have a program with GIZ out of Germany. And this program is we are, um, as I mentioned earlier, that we are building uh, and de designing new crafts that it's, you know, that would fit more or fit in the outer islands within modern needs. Right now, people use, uh, are collect, are making copper oil. So what do they need? They need uh, bigger vessels that be shallower draft so they can come closer to the island and, you know, uh, collect copras and make copras. So we're, we're designing accordingly, you know, uh, fishing. So we have another design with the proa. So where we use the proa vessel for our fishing purposes, for fishing without, you know, any worry about the weather or, you know, uh, ice or things that we need when you need fish to deliver to the center. So these vessels, they're, the design came from the, from the um, canoe design, from that, you know, that skill. Anyhow, so with the GIZ program, we're able to cut the, um, the fuel consumption with the government, ship, National Shipping Corporation, the government have National Shipping Corporation, where they go to the out islands, to the atolls, and stop. They have so many stop in the other islands. So that's a lot of cons uh, fuel consumption. But by providing these boats, they're able to collect copras or cargo that needs to get on the ship and centralize uh, a place to uh, drop off where the ship will come in. So it saves so much fuel. It saves so much fuel that the, uh, in turn, the government will save a lot of money. That means the country will survive longer because less fossil fuel has been used. So our program is not just working with the partner NGOs, but with the local government, with the national government, with the international partners. Now we are one of the groups that give talks around the world on sustainable sea transport because of the traditional innocence through our canoeing culture. We have, currently we have some trainees from the uh, outer islands who are here with us from Kwajalein Atoll, Lai and Lep, and out of them. From these atolls, we brought them in so they can stay with us for three months and learn this new technique that will add benefits of our vessel, of our, you know, to the outer island setting. So how does WAM's vision for the future look like? Our goal to make sure that every islands within the Marshall Islands have a canoe for every single family to enjoy today. We need that 1.5 alive because without that 1.5, small countries like the Marshall Islands will be underwater. So we need your help. I challenge you. I challenge the big countries to stand with the small countries. I challenge the leaders from the big countries to stand with the leaders in the small countries and small people like myself and all these little programs, all the youth today that are struggling to stand with us to fight against climate change. Make sure that we have the, you know, we survive. We have the right to live.
in this world. Good, so we just tried again to uh, show the video. I hope this time it didn't break off that much. And otherwise it will be also made available after the session and you can access it and rewatch it afterwards. So just to give you a short update or a short input on our transitioning to low carbon sea transport project. Um, we see that the shipping, or we just learned that the shipping is, is vital for small island nations. And um, there are partnerships worldwide that help in exchanging knowledge and capacity development and learning from each other. So for example, at the moment, we have the international collaboration with GIZ and science partners that are also based around the world to focus on decarbonization of the shipping sector. And this has a, this has a two-sided approach. We focus on the inside lagoon transport on the one hand, which focuses mainly on um, canoe building and reviving the canoe skills. And the second part of the project is focusing on the transportation between the atolls. So that involves bigger vessels. And as we saw in the video before, we are trying to focus on wind propulsion because this is the, at the moment in our view, with the focus in our low carbon sea transport project, the best way to reduce carbon emissions here in the Marshall Islands and at the same time create adaptation to climate change. And to achieve a significant reduction of greenhouse gases in the lagoon shipping sector, the aim of the collaboration between BOM and the GIZ low carbon sea transport project is to revitalize the marine capabilities of the Marshallese island communities and thereby strengthening climate resilience in the country. And therefore, a comprehensive canoe building, knowledge transfer, education and training program is implemented by WAM, as we learned from Elton just now. And this re revitalization program will use new sailing lagoon vessel designed as flagships together with traditional canoes as the backbone of future lagoon shipping. In combination with training on the water, as also can, as also can be seen here on this project, and this includes sailing, fishing and safety, the outer island communities get skilled and the boat people and carpenters, they participate and are able to build their own sustainable canoe at the end of their participation to take back to their atolls. For some of the atoll nations, this is the first canoe that they have for a long time. We recently worked together with a canoe builder from Likiev, and when he brought back home this canoe that he built in the workshop, the community was very excited and there was a big celebration and I think there will be Later on, also a short, a short input on that to see what, basically, what kind of value the canoe, canoe tradition has here in the Marshall Islands. So the preparation of the ply sheets that usually takes place in the uh, in the workshop at one. The ply, the the, the plywoods that are being used for the for the boat building, it, uh, it, it is new material that has traditionally not been used, but it, uh, it is material that is available here in the Marshall Islands. So sometimes you would ask yourself the question, and we, we, we are confronted with this question from time to time, why the collaboration of Western science and indigenous knowledge is important. And is this Basically because, and this is how we try to answer ourselves the question, that the traditional knowledge is in decline. And that, the, that since the 1950s and throughout the 20th century especially, the canoe building and sailing has not been as prominent here in the Marshall Islands as it was before. 
and many island communities lost the skills to build their canoes. And at the same time, the transportation and fishing shifted towards towards shipping that is um, based on fossil fuels. So the current challenges for the canoeing culture is especially um, the, the skills that have been lost, but at the same time also the access to the materials that were present here on island for a long time. Uh, the traditional canoe construction depends on breadfruit trees, but as you can imagine, the name already says, breadfruit trees are no longer being available here on the Marshall Islands in a vast majority. So the interruption of the plantation circle lead, led to the circumstance that the breadfruit tree is not available to be used for canoeing, for canoe building. The breadfruit tree to sustain livelihoods, especially in the outer islands, became more important. On the other end, we also have a rising sea level that is a threat from the climate change. Um, and this is basically also um, the purpose of, 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 this, of the COP26, that we create an awareness that the rising sea levels, especially in low island or in low, low lying atoll nations, have a tremendous effect on agriculture and especially also in this case on the breadfruit trees that are traditionally used for canoe building and um, are, not, are not growing to that extent anymore. So on this picture, you see that we have a very traditional outrigger canoe finishing and sailing after the, the training took place. It is important to uh, focus on uh, different aspects of the canoe. And there you see a combination in design of, of uh, traditional usage of materials. For example, the beams, they are still being used by logs, by uh, wood that is available on island. Um, however, the hulls of the canoes, they are used, they, within our workshops, they are being produced with marine plywood, but still trying to apply the same traditional skills to build, which for example includes the stitch and glue, which provides a good technique to combine plywood and to shape hulls into a 3D model. And here we have one of our um, pilot, one of our uh, pilot um, models, which is the Wow Catamaran. So this has been designed uh, with the scientific partners from Germany, especially um, Henrik Richter Alten, who has been part in the design process and has spent several months here out in the Marshall Islands. And of course, with Juan and Elson and his team. And uh, the construction of this prototype is that, that there was a, um, an approach of adapting the traditional canoe design and the special requirements for shipping and transport out in the outer islands. Also taking into account the different setting on each atoll and the new challenges due to climate change. In total, there were two prototypes being designed so the one catamaran being one of them. It is a very simple construction. It can be built within a couple of weeks instead of traditionally when canoes were built uh, over several months. It has the same sail as a traditional canoe and a very dry cargo compartment, which is especially important to uh, transport, for example, copra. Um, dried coconut in the outer islands. The value of the copra is being measured by, especially by dry coconut. Um, when the when the coconut when the copra becomes soggy and wet, the quality drops, the quality decreases, which is not desirable by the copra tradespeople, and therefore the design was amended to have the dry cargo compartments and also to, to have larger 
house, larger uh, compartments to, to uh, transport the uh, to transport the cobra. The has a great buoyancy and it um, it has a decreased draft when it comes when it is placed in the water when it sails through the water. There's a lot of space, especially also to uh, transport passenger. But although it is quite a big canoe, it can be sailed by a minimum of two sailors. The second prototype that was designed is the Harry Pro. And here there was a collaboration with another boat builder. His name is Rob Denny from New Zealand. As you can see on the pictures, the Harry Pora is, is in um, the design is, is uh, similar to the outrigger canoe, where one of the hulls is smaller than the other. On the picture on top, you can see that it, it has been already designed. So were the, the uh, steps that we um, use here in the Marshall Islands at Guam is that during the training the, that are being conducted, the design is tailor-made. So we, have, we are at the moment at our third um, training. Um, the first design, which is uh, which was conducted in the first training, you can see on the pictures below, on the picture below. And then it has transformed to, in the second boat building workshop, to the design um, that is visible on top. So the amendments of the design were that it was included to have a, a fish hold with seawater supply, to have a um, small kitchen to prepare the fish, within the dry compartment that is accessible to, uh, to the sailors on board. It has a shallow draft to be stable in the water, and it is very close to the traditional design because the same sail is being used. On this picture, you see uh, the workshop at one. This is um, the training uh, ongoing, where the material is being displaced, and then being set together on the picture um, below where you already see the paint. This is already the final step where the boat is being put together by the canoes. And as you can see, the last time we had three, we had four atolls participating. And for each atoll, there was one canoe built. On top of the one cat that was that was built in in, uh, in a joint approach by all trainees together, including the one staff. The one hosts three months training sessions for Marshallese boat builders and sailors and the island communities. They send their particip participants, especially based on previous experience in canoe building and woodcraft. Um, so the one in in, in each. In each uh, training session, there is one prototype designed, either a one cat or a Harry Pro, and one traditional canoe for each of the trainees. And that is being constructed. And afterwards, the Marshall Island Shipping Corporation helps with transporting the canoes to the outer islands. There's therefore a direct benefit for the participating communities because the participants, the trainees, they are taking their canoe out of, into the to the outer islands, which is then owned by the local government, um, by the canoe builders, who, who most of the time then conduct trainings in the outer islands to be able to transfer their knowledge to the community. The benefits for the local communities in this is the canoe that has been transported to Likia is the availability of transportation out in their atolls, and this is independent of the fossil fuel. So the canoe can be used without any further, co further costs involvements. There's no investment needed, and basically using the wind sustainable source of energy to transport goods, to transport people from one point to the other on the islands. Food security is also being provided by using the canoe on fishing trips. And of course, there's a pride and self-esteem that is being developed by revitalize the traditional canoe skills 
that were used for a long time in the outer islands and now being used again and the enjoyment of sailing the canoes out in the outer islands is revived. The curriculum of the, of the training includes the canoe design, handling the tools, using new materials that have previously not been used, also using, also uh, getting to know new techniques, how to, to use the new materials, sailing, training, and also safety on the water. The outlook for the project and also for Guam in general is the second phase of the training, shop, uh, training workshop where developing techniques to build larger canoes to regain fauna marine capabilities is, is approached or is pursued, especially the desire to build a wall up in the future is something that Guam canoes of the Marshall Islands would like to achieve. On the other hand, we also have the offshore cargo, sailo, uh, cargo sailing vessel, additional to the SD choir that we saw in the video. There will be a training provided on the ship, and uh, a new built ship is currently being designed together with the government of the Marshall Islands and hopefully being delivered to the Marshall Islands within a year from now. And maybe one and a half years, depending on how fast the delivery process will take place. And we will also try to upscale to other countries and the regions, the approaches that we learned throughout this project. So now we're coming to an end of our session. We are still having some time to answer questions and um, yeah, have conversations. But first of all, I would like to express our gratitude to everyone who has been involved so far and for all participants that joined us in this morning session. Thank you very much to all our friends from the Pacific and around the world that allow us to collaborate so closely and continuously develop new ideas with a focus on training and sustainable sea transport. And we wish, of course, everyone successful discussions and negotiations at COP and that the very bold statement from Alston is being heard and being transferred to other regions in the world. If you have any questions, please raise your virtual hand up. We will try to answer everyone's question to the best of our knowledge. So please feel free to raise your hands in case any questions come up. So we have one hand from Mr. Bartolini. Please feel free to, to raise your question. Yes, well, first, thanks for the presentation. It's, it's really interesting. I really appreciate it. Um, it's an interesting project in terms of how you have uh, integrated tech with uh, science and, and made a, a solution that uh, helps to address climate issues. And I'm also wondering, I know, I've been on Majuro years ago, and I know they had a traditional navigation school on the island. Is that still around? And was that part of this program as well in terms of not only building craft, but teaching older uh, traditional skills of navigation. Thank you very much. Um, yes, indeed, the, the traditional navigation is, is still a major part of the Guam program, especially working with, with youth and dropout school, school students. Um, the, the navigation, um, uh, Alson Kellen is a, is a well-known navigator here out in the Pacific. And um, as a matter of fact, at the moment, they are trying to incorporate the traditional knowledge also on navigation into the public school system, trying it also at the outer islands, especially. 
where, for example, we work closely with the Ministry of Education together to go out to the outer islands and have a, an approach of um, uh, the dual approach, having the lesson on canoe building skills and navigation inside the classroom uh, at one session in the morning and then basically leaving the classroom, getting out into the fields, getting out to the, uh, to the uh, outer island um, first with uh, hands-on approaches to learn in the nature. Thank you for that. Just a, a quick follow-up question. Uh, has there been any um, effort to try to do a peer-to-peer -peer program with other islands in the Pacific with respect to this program? Um, yes. So I think we are planning to have a um, regional boat building, boat builders workshop that will take place hopefully in December, where we've invited different boat builders from um, uh, countries in, in the region especially connected to WAM, uh, net, already in the network of WAM. And um, we are collaborating, for example, closely with Fiji. There is the Sustainable Sea Transport Initiative. And uh, they, they combine their knowledge together with the Marshall Islands, um, especially with, with the program at WAM, to reach out to other countries in the nation, uh, in, in the region, to showcase what's being done here in terms of uh, training and, uh, and thereby also learning about um, canoe building skills in the, in the other uh, small island development states here in the region and basically fostering an exchange and um, well, we'll see what the outcome of the, of the meeting will be. There will be several topics that are interesting to get a better understanding of for example, uh, transparency when it comes to a boat building um, in the region and keeping their traditional knowledge alive. Um, at the same time, also dealing with the topic of censorship and uh, when it comes to the designs of the boat, to see how the, to what extent the, the plans and designs can be shared um, and to what extent the knowledge transfer is appropriate and desired by the different countries since every country traditionally also has their their boat building skills that they um, pass on within the family from father to son and to also not scrutinize this approach which is still very important and um, and valued um, there's an exchange to also discuss with other boat builders in the region Great. Thank I'm also you very seeing much. that. Oh, yes, you're welcome. I'm also seeing that our colleague uh, Tony from Guam has joined the um, has joined our meeting. So if there is anything that you would like to uh, share on this, Tony, please feel free to to also contribute to the questions that Mark just raised. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Yanina. Uh, the call has always been to branch out to other parts of the Pacific, which is what I've been sure that we take our time to make sure that um, at least in our in Marshall Island where the project started, we rerun it successfully. The goal has always been to branch it out. Thank you. Is there is there any other question from from the participants? Well, it doesn't look like it. Um, so maybe we can come to an end of the session. Uh, I believe that the, that the session will also be shared and made available afterwards. Uh, we also like to share our screen for our final uh, folder, uh, final uh, slide of the, um, of the presentation. So we have our contact details made to us at any point in time. We are happy to network and exchange further. And discussing about traditional canoeing and sustainable sea transport in the region and worldwide. So thank you very much for joining us today. Omotata. Omotata.